hi you guys you're welcome back to my channel i'm so so excited about yesterday about the um live session we had it was wow the um participation everything was indeed great and we've got loads and loads of feedbacks i've got people in my dms saying this saying that asking this asking that we ought to bring more of that please stay tuned on this channel are you new to my channel and you're wondering what i'm talking about you want to have a scroll through my videos please you will see the exciting and the amazing things we've got we've got for you and i'm sure you will learn a thing or two and i'm sure you might be able to share a theme or two with us in the comment section so please subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet and if you're a returnee thank you so so much for coming back so my name is Olibu Kola Akimolaya Ogundele. I'm a registered nurse. I live out and I work in the UK. So today I'm going to be talking quickly. I plan to make this video as short as it can be. I'll be talking about things that you need to leave at your airport coming into the UK as a student, as a, a, a skilled worker, as um, whatever it is you're coming to the UK for or as you need to leave some things at your airport. Yes, you heard me right. Because you cannot afford to bring them in here. They will mess your brain up. They will mess things up for you. And it might be hard finding a balance following the shock. So first off, we all know about the culture shock of um, moving from a place to the other place. There are loads of changes to, you know, accept, adjust and adapt to. Like um, um, your lifestyle and um, the changing weather, your dressing. So many, you've got to put your ears down to listen to accents and all of that. Your food, you've got to go to Africa shops are quite expensive but you can still get them anyway and a thousand and one other things you know to still adjust with so um just to make sure that there are not or you don't have too many things adjusting to is the essence of this video so the first thing is whether you're 16 coming to uni or you're 30 coming as a skilled worker or you're a nurse you're a doctor you're a pharmacist you're a, whatever you are you're coming into the uk number one thing you want to leave is greeting everyone on the road as funny and simple and easy as it sounds um for me being a nigerian we greet every well i greet every person i meet on the road back home so not like i would put my knees down to greet them but then i would show courtesy because they, they look elderly than i am so i know i did this for a number of times when i first got to uk to the uk and then it wasn't very funny because i was ignored i was being looked as you know funny and stupid and all before i then you know adjusted and got people to tell me that oh you don't greet people anyhow in the uk so that's the very first thing to just put at the back of your mind it doesn't happen here even people that you know just say hi and just walk past it doesn't mean you're not being friendly or it doesn't mean you don't respect them the way they they accept or, or and see respect or view respect is quite different from the way we africans do as an example whether you're filipino or you're indian and you're watching this um video or you're from any part of the world and um, i don't know what your culture is regarding greeting so i might not be able to relate or talk about it but i'm talking about it just in relation to me being in nigeria that's the number one thing so um in the comment section just to mention quickly what's that thing are you an existing person in the uk already what's that thing you've had to drop that you or you wish you had dropped at the airport that you had to drop the hard way here in the uk is it a behavior is it a whatever it is what is that thing please make me laugh please let me know in the comment section thank you in advance next thing to drop is that sense of entitlement please please and please drop it in the airport nigerians leave it at muritala muhammad airport when i first came in giving myself as an example of course i can't use other people that's to be me i expected this i expected that i got promised this and i had a bit of failures here and there and i wasn't very happy with it and i wish you know i had known all of these things you see but with time i just adjusted and now when people come in or when people show that sense of entitlement like, i'm like can you just calm down like this place you have come to also you have come to also people are doing normal hours they're having to pick up extra hours they're doing agency bank everything they can do you know delivery they're doing all the menial jobs in the world just to make ends meet or probably send stuff home or just to get a balance and then you are expecting so much from them i mean what if they don't even know to do it so even if you ask you, you don't have to necessarily get it so take that sense of entitlement of people's time 
people's property, people's money and stuff. Take it off your mind. Work out for your own money. Work out for your own stuff. And everyone will be all right. There'll be no argument, no problems at all. Another thing to live at your airport, coming to the UK to work, study, whatsoever it is, is not knowing how to do things for yourself. I mean, when we go to this house or maybe it doesn't matter which house you live, We've had to buy things and we had to assemble them ourselves. You buy tools yourself, like screwdriver and everything. You be your own carpenter. You be your own laundryman. You be your own plumber. You be your own literally everything. It is when it just gets out of hand, or maybe you've got a landlord, and you could just quickly ring them. Okay, I don't want to complicate things, but this has happened. Um, can you come have a look at it, please? I mean, I've had a landlord who came to look at our uh, sink so they saw there was like accumulation of fat in the pipe and it was proper winter period and the pipes were getting blocked so for that reason the fatty foods and fatty oils and stuff couldn't just go through so we had occlusion so he repaired it and then he said to me oh it cost me so so and so to repair it so the next time it gets blocked you will be charged uh, i'm like could it be that it's all my own oil that i've used just within this time period that i've been here and has caused that blockage it might be from some other person that you've had in this house before but then i didn't argue so that's simple the mindset the way it works here is if you buy a table do not expect the table to come made up like we have it back home you really want to put the top on top of the top and then the legs and everything and the chairs and everything everything nearly everything here is diy i mean it's not to mean that we still don't have a few things that you buy and then you receive as a whole but oftentimes they are diy so you've got to go on google you've got to go on youtube you've got to read the manual you know how we nigerians do not read manual we are so canny we are so good with stuff that we don't need to read the manual we just put the manual aside here i've learned to sit with the manual first so um you drop all of those as well another point quickly which i think might be around sense of entitlement as well is getting upset that people haven't wronged you people haven't come to visit you and um, they did not ask of me did not ask of me please leave it at your airport because here we all know why we have come here we all know our primary reasons so every other thing is ephemeral and for that reason people would i mean social life is great i love social life as well but there are some times that things are hard for some people they've got a situation arising they've got money they need to you know meet with or and all of that so for that reason they might not ring you they might not come visit you i know like nigeria where i don't know if it's changed where you could just turn up at someone's door i thought to surprise you you probably meet them you probably don't meet them maybe once in a while you ring them in the morning but then you don't tell them the exact time you'll be coming they just turn up at 6 p.m and then they're like ah but i thought you were not gonna come anymore you're like well i was just passing by i thought to still come anyway it doesn't happen here i may be at home but do not feel like visiting or do not feel like accepting visitors. The reason may not be far-fetched. It may be my family dynamics. It may be I'm trying to put the kids to sleep. It may be my husband doesn't like us having visitors at that time and I don't have one problem or argument. For that reason, I would say no. It might be something has just happened to me at that point in time. My mind is not okay to receive visitors and I'm not obliged to. So there is, there is no obligation around here where you feel as though, uh, why, why did she say no? But she looked all right to accept visitors. Why did she not let me in or something? There's nothing like that. Just take things with a pinch of salt sometimes. Do not take anything so hard. So this point is just using technology. So like your social media, your Instagram, your Twitter, whatever it is you've got, you have to learn to use it more. To probably learn to socialize and stuff because as much as UK or any abroad it is you're going to has good um, facility and everything. And then if you put your plans right, you can make all the money that you like or that you can. It is so tasking that you probably don't have time, like I said earlier, for social life. I mean, when we want to party, we party hard. But then when you're at that point of us us and meeting targets for your rent or whatever it is, you don't have time. So at that point in time, you'd agree with me that it's good to pick up loving your own company. So you've got to pick that up. Maybe this one is not a drop off at the airport. This one is a pick up at the airport. I mean, we all like to say that, oh, I love myself. I'm my own company. I can be my own company. But in the reality will eat you, whether you have been telling yourself what is not true or not. The reality will hit you here where indeed you have to find comfort in your own presence and in your own self and your 
um being alone sometimes even though you're married your husband may be pulling all the shit together and stuff so that being said using technology to find information to relax yourself without being overly doing it because um, i was reading about how you can you can know an anxious person number one is they often scroll on and on even when they're tired of scrolling they just can't stop scrolling their instagram <clears throat> so that's it that's a sign of anxiety as funny as it sounds so it's not to me to get addicted because the thing is that this place our children do not play with the next year or call or something they they are with their tabs they are with their phones as well and stuff they're watching you what i'm trying to get out of this is that they would watch whatever you do so if you're an addicted to the phone kind of person there would be that kind of person remember that children don't do what we ask them to do they do what they see us do so you've got to make sure that you find a balance where you're not overly stuck to your phone it may even cause problem in your marriage where i remember when i first you know got married and then we started living together <clears throat> because i was so used to my phone and i had used it to keep myself company before my husband came in I was so used to it that even sometimes when he's talking to me, I'm busy scrolling what's happening on Instagram or Twitter and I wasn't very happy with me and it might cause issue if you're not careful. So, but in all, you need technology, you need to stay up to date with things. You need to, you cannot afford to say, oh, I don't know how to do it. How do they press it? You have to learn how to press it. You have to learn how to use it to find your feet. Um, but still try to find a balance so you don't cause yourself troubles at the same time. Last but not the least thing to drop. I mean, this is a summary. The list is inexhaustible, to be honest. If I was to rack my head, put a pen on paper, I could go on and on and on and on. So you will still learn on the job. There are some things that people will not still tell you until you enter and be like, okay, so is this how you guys are here? So if you remember anything that I haven't mentioned and you, you've experienced it or you, you're not here yet, but you, you're thinking I better drop this one off, please leave it in the comment section. Let's have some interaction in the comment, se comment section. I've had embarrassing moment for instance the first one i talked about greeting people on the road <clears throat> i remember when i first came and then i saw these two people on the stairs i was going to the classroom they were coming down so i thought they were one of our lecturers or two of our lecturers so i thought let me just say hi to them ah lecturer are you so i just said ah hi, yeah you're right or maybe i just said oh no it must have been good afternoon that was what i said so i said oh good afternoon he just looked at me like okay following that good afternoon what what did you good afternoon us for you get it so you just don't talk to people if there's no reason for it i mean people that are even in the same classroom or same office together when you both they don't have to necessarily say hi and once they say hi that's it. just leave it brief so no extra curriculum of chatting how is family how is husband how is clinical well done and that thing is well done you know how we just walk past people ah well done no there's nothing like that so they'll be like what have i done the first time i did it you know, not first time i did it like 50 times ah well done I'm like what have i done ah. And I'm like, but we, we used to just walk past people and just say well done for well done's sake. It's not the same here. So just leave that one by your airport and so many others. So the last but not the least is do not judge anyone who leave it at your airport. When you come to the UK, you know how when we see people back home smoking or drinking, whether on the roads, on the streets, we're judging them. Ah, ah, who gave birth to this one? Or Matalele? And then you're thinking, you're looking at them like a piece of shite. It's not applicable here, oh my sister, my brother. Smoking is a normal thing. When you book bad on cigar, what it means is that these people around here, they enjoy cigarettes and they drink. So they see it as a recreational um, habit or something, recreational activity, sorry. And some of them form habit out of it. So it is not your own to say, have you given your life to Christ? Why are you smoking? Do not try it to my brother. Do not. It is normal for them. Even in places, I mean, it's a criminal offense, as simple as it sounds. Smoking in places where they are literally announcing that smoking is not allowed. But they still do it too. So what is that your own to tell them to come and collect Jesus in their life? because they are smoking. Leave it by your door. Somebody behaves in some way. Somebody tells the other person to F off. They are kiniko and they are thinking, oh my God, they are not Christians. They are not true Muslims. What was your own? So just leave them. Do not judge anybody. And in the same order, do not leave it at your doorstep in your airport before entering another man's country. And you can preach to people anyhow. You can do a, an open preaching where you can speak to everyone. Do you get it? But 
you have to take there are procedures and protocols to it you have to speak to the council you must know that you normally come out to preach and all of that and if you're doing it one-to-one -one, you have to gain consent of that person many people have lost their license to practice in the same uk because they were trying to say get a soul for christ it's very important i would love to do everything to get a soul for christ myself as well but bible says wisdom is profitable to direct in all you get, get understanding. So I would not do anything to deter or to cause problem for myself. That being said, I would love to end this video here. Just use your wisdom as much as possible. Then talkativeness is another thing that I just thought of right now. Do not overly talk and buttress and buttress and buttress and buttress things. When you people will pick from the simple question they asked you, the answer you gave, then now the extra curriculum you added to that answer, they will now leave the answer alone and go and pick from your extra curriculum. For that reason, for that reason, sorry, do things in or with moderation here. That's the summary. Do things with moderation. And I hope you've gained a thing or two. I'll leave you now. Thank you so much for watching till the end. My name is Olubu Kola Akimalai Gundele again. I'm a YouTuber. I'm a nurse. I do vlogs on uh, marriage, family, going out, nursing, nursing development, career development, interviews. Um, if it's anything that interests you, please, please subscribe to my channel. And I will go now. My son is here. Take care, guys. Bye.